Greetings, true believers! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! Yes, it's that time again, as we rejoin the Road to the Avengers, and begin to pick up steam with one of the Marvel Universe's heaviest hitters, the Ace of Asgard, the Prince of Power, the God of Thunder himself, Thor! Released in 2011, and directed by none other than noted Shakespearean fest Kenneth Branagh, Thor is the first Marvel movie to hint at a larger universe than just our overcrowded Earth. It was also a pivotal moment for the nascent super franchise, because if suspension of disbelief could stretch to Asgard, perhaps it could be stretched somewhat further. But we'll get to that. For now though, while it's still looking decidedly cloudy, there's no chance of meatballs, as we call down the thunder with... Thor! It has been 1,000 years since the frost giants rampaged across the realm of Midgard. A simple truth. The frost giants. They were driven back by the Norse god Odin and his army. Their king fell. And now, Thor, Odin's son, is set to receive his father's throne. But uninvited guests look to crash the party. Ooh! Burn! Thor seeks redress in the frozen landscape of Jotunheim. That's the only way to ensure the safety of our borders. Thor, it's mad. We're going to Jotunheim. Ice King Lofi reluctantly grants our heroes an audience. You're nothing but a boy trying to prove himself a man. But an unwise comment. Run back home, little princess. Damn. Leads to an even less wise battle. expect Lady Sif to take more umbrage of that little princess crack than Thor would. I mean, after all, it was he that helped Lady Sif to become a warrior in the first place. So he says. And an uncomfortable revelation. Odin intervenes. These are the actions of a boy. Treat them as such. He'll get what he came for. War and death. So be it. But he's not happy. Greedy! Cruel boy! And you are an old man and a fool! And Thor is banished. Your power! I hold it, Lord Father! Cut you off! Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. I never screw up badly enough to get kicked out of anywhere. A team of scientists has been searching for auras in the sky. What they find this evening, however, is beyond their wildest imaginations. Do me a favor and don't be dead. <gasps> and we're skipping the hospital scene. Apologies to any fans of Chris Hemsworth's backside, but I just don't think it adds anything to the plot. And we find out where Mjolnir landed. This event quickly gathers an audience. Don't kill us. Let me help. Oh, it in now. Oh, oh, oh. Did it work? And the attentions of a certain secret organization. So, we found it. Well, come on, it's a Marvel movie. You've got to include the Stan Lee cameo. Loki discovers the truth of his origins. The casket wasn't the only thing you took from Jotunheim that day, was it? In the aftermath of the battle, I went into the temple and I found a baby. Long story short, Odin found Lofi's runt baby raised it as his own, with a view to hoping to unite the two kingdoms with Loki as the glue. 
Except, well, Loki. Points for trying, though. But even as Loki rails against his adoptive father, Odin is taken by the Odin sleep. I don't need to protect you from the truth. These years, because no matter how much you claim to love me, you can never have a frost giant sitting on the throne of Asgard. Guys, please help! Thus, Loki ascends the throne. My first command cannot be to undo the Allfather's last. Our people need a sense of continuity. While Jane and her team are shut down by S.H.I.E.L.D. Shield. Is that supposed to mean something to me? I'm on the verge of understanding something extraordinary. And everything I know about this phenomenon is either in this lab or in this book, and you can't just take this away. Thor seeks to reclaim his hammer. You're big. Fought bigger. But oh dear. Aw, oh, gee, that's too bad. You know, Goku the Monkey King spent like half a millennium under a mountain. Then Loki appears to deliver ill tidings. Well, the father is dead. Lost and alone, our hero settles into his human life. But Loki's machinations would see the frost giants invade. After all I've done for you, I will conceal you and a handful of your soldiers lead you into Odin's chambers and you can slay him where he lies. Offside, Loki! You don't kick a man when he's regenerating. Just ask the Time Lords. These machinations are not entirely unopposed, however. Did Odin ever fear you? No. And why? Because he is my king, and I'm sworn to obey him. He was your king, and you're sworn to obey me now. As Thor's friends journey to Earth to recover him. Open the bridge to you? Complicated fellow, isn't he? And expose Loki's lies. Your father still lives. A fate for which the mischievous one has prepared, as he sends a destroyer to tie up the loose ends. Wow, short heroic arc. Well, they've only got 115 minutes. I don't suppose they have the time for, like, androgynous monks and transforming horses and the like. Thor will stand by no longer. Brother, whatever I have done to wrong you, whatever I have done to lead you to do this, I am truly sorry. But these people are innocent. And looks to give his life for his adoptive home. Oh man. It's getting so you gotta kill yourself to get superpowers these days. This sacrifice pleases Mjolnir. And the God of Thunder lives again. So is this how you normally look? More or less. It's a good look. Thus do we reach our finale. Loki. Oh. I knew you'd return to us. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to destroy young Pine. Wherein brother fights brother for what is right, what is true, and the transgressions of an adopted Jotun. You can't kill an entire race. Why not? I never wanted the throne! I only ever wanted to be your equal. That's sibling rivalry. The stories I could tell. But Loki's plan is enacted. No! No! 
And there's only one way to save the Frost Giants from extinction. And so our movie ends as peace is restored to the Nine Realms. But shock! Loki survived! Well, I guess that's worth a look. Well, I guess that's worth a look. So that was Thor. And I just have to put this one into the House of Love. What's not to love about this movie? A mastercrafted epic from a Shakespearean director who skillfully avoids the trap of these and thous, and co-written by Joe Straczynski, who knows a thing or two about epics, having show run Babylon 5 for five seasons, and all of this would count for naught if the performances weren't up to snuff. Thankfully, we're blessed again, with Hemsworth, Hiddleston, Hopkins, and Clark Gregg's ubiquitous S.H.I.E.L.D. agent putting in turn after marvellous turn. As with the Iron Man movies, the plot itself is rather thin. Being that Thor's transgression leads to Loki's deception leads to an action climax, or two, but the character moments and dialogue flesh out this movie, making a svelte 115 minutes fly by like a trip across the Bifrost. And what a relief to return to this road after so long away from it. Only one more step until the big one. Which reminds me, I've got a few calls to make. But for now, I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days and great movies. So long, folks! <laughs>